Greetings everyone. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your own brushes for use in Draw Plus. I'm working in X5 but you should be able to follow the video if you have a less recent version too. If you use Draw Plus for painting or sketching chances are you're going to be familiar with the type of preset brushes on offer. Browse the brushes tab and you'll see a wide range of both stroke and spray brushes. From photorealistic through to embroidery brushes, there are many to suit all types of creative projects. Choosing the drawing category for instance, you can see chalks, markers, pens and pencils. All the brushes included with Draw Plus are pressure sensitive, so if you own a graphics tablet, you can take advantage of this feature to produce variable strokes. But what happens if you've been through all the categories in the Brushes tab and can't find the type of brush you're looking for? The answer, of course, is to create your own, and I'm going to show you how. To introduce you to the process of creating a brush, I'm going to start by creating a fairly simple stroke brush from a quick shape rectangle. The rectangle is going to form the basis of my brush. I'm giving the rectangle a thicker border and proceeding to apply some colour. I'll finish off by giving the shape a decorative pencil edge. Let's make the edge a little bit thicker so the effect is clearer. The next step is to add my brush to the brushes tab where it will become freely available for selection. To do this, I first need to export the brush as an image file. With the shape selected, go to the File menu and choose Export, followed by Export as Image. You can choose to export your brush as any common image file type, but I'm choosing the default, PNG. The next step is to select the Brushes tab and choose which category to save the brush to. If you right click with the mouse, it is possible to create a new category, but for ease, I'm going to save my brush to the currently empty Custom category. Right click in the dialog and select Add Stroke Brush. I'll deal with creating spray brushes later on in the tutorial. Adding a stroke calls the Stroke Brush Edit dialog. I'm giving the brush a name and browsing my computer to find the exported file. You can see from the preview that there's a bit of transparent space around the left and right sides of the rectangle. So before I create the brush, I'm reducing the amount of unwanted area around it by adjusting the sliders. At this point, there is an option to change something called the body repeat method, which governs how a brush is applied to the page as one stretched or tiled image. For now, I'm leaving the repeat method as stretch. I'm going to ignore the brush properties for now, I'll come back to these in a bit, and proceed to click OK. By doing so, you can see that the brush has been added to the Brushes tab and is now selectable. Let me draw a few strokes on the page so you can see how the brush looks. To tweak the properties of an individual brush, simply double click on it from the Brushes tab. I'm going to change the body repeat method of the brush to simple. By doing so, I'm telling DrawPlus to tile the brush image so that now, when I click OK and start using the brush, the rectangle is repeated across each stroke. Another setting to adjust is brush properties, which controls pressure sensitivity. Earlier, when I applied light pressure with my pen tablet, I saw no results on the screen. However, by adjusting the minimum sensitivity to 20%, I'm guaranteeing that a very light shade of the brush will be visible, even when I apply minimal pressure. See this very light stroke at the top here? This wouldn't be visible if I hadn't increased the minimum sensitivity. Tweak the pressure settings to suit the project you're working on. You'll find the ability to adjust the brush properties very useful, particularly when shading. So that's the basics about how to create a simple stroke brush in Draw Plus Covered. Now that I've dealt with the basics, I'm going to share with you a few advanced tips. My first piece of advice is to experiment with lots of different shapes and combinations. 
I particularly like using swirls, which are commonly used elements in design. Here, I'm drawing a spiral and adjusting the sliding handles to customise the appearance of the shape. For additional impact, you could decide to apply filter effects or graphic styles to your patterns, but I quite like the simplicity of this design. Having imported the brush into the Brushes tab, and with the simple repeat method applied, I can start painting. This effect would look great for a border. For this next tip, I'm using a drawing of a snake to demonstrate how it's possible to create a brush that repeats just the central part of its design. I'm quickly going to open the brush stroke edit dialog and use an image of the snake as a stroke brush. The lines on both sides of the body indicate that the entire body of the snake is selected. If I proceed to create the brush with the body repeat method set to simple, the image of the snake is repeated throughout each stroke. Now look what happens when I go back into the brush's properties and adjust the position of the lines so that the snake is divided into three distinct areas, head, body and tail. See that only the body of the snake is repeated, meaning the creation of one large snake. Up to this point, I've dealt specifically with stroke brushes, but for my final tip, I'm going to show you how to create a spray brush. Spray brushes are great for applying decoration to a page, and in this example, I'm going to embellish this award logo by converting the red star at the top of the page into a brush. The process is similar to that of creating a stroke brush, however, when you right click to add an exported image to the brushes tab, select add spray instead. The dialog presented is slightly different to that we've seen before. Begin by giving your brush a name and by importing the image that you'd like to turn into a brush. A preview is visible down the side. As it stands, the stars are quite tightly spaced together, so I'm going to customise the spacing. I can also play with other, position as well as size controls. Here, I'm adjusting horizontal jitter, size jitter and opacity to further determine how the stars are displayed. I'll finish off by adjusting the way that they are rotated. And now, when I use the brush, you can see that the stars are applied as a spray to the page, with the properties selected giving the effect of randomness. So that's it for this video tutorial on creating brushes in Draw Plus. Next time you're drawing and can't quite find a brush for the effect you're looking for, try experimenting and create your own. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Until next time, many thanks for watching.